Hello and welcome back to another MLB DFS Slate Breakdown for Tuesday, April 9th. We are back. We had a real fun game, a uh, fun day of games last night with, uh, gotta shout out my Padres here, nice uh, comeback win there, somehow uh, down eight and came back to win the game. So pretty fun one uh, to watch and pay attention to. And it was a fun slate with that too, just because a ton of people that were pretty much dead to rights came back and won solid money with that Padre stack. It is a fun thing about MLB DFS is, you know, one big inning or a couple big innings can really change the entire slate. Now, uh, today we're going to start off by going through yesterday's slate, the perfect lineups, the winning lineups. Then we're going to go into today's pitching, the ownership, maybe some pivots, and then followed by stacks to consider. Now, before we get into it, come join us at LionStar. $39.99 per month gets you access to everything we do, all the props, all the DFS, all the tools. You get it all one low price. Come join us. It's going to be a fun summer with uh, some good old baseball. All right. Now, oh, for some reason it was on uh, NBA. Now let's get into the perfect lineup. And, oops, on the wrong all right, so DraftKings, perfect lineup. We got Jose Barrio says a pitcher with Spencer Turnbull. And then we got a two-man Washington stack, a two-man Houston stack, and no Padres, unfortunately, for DraftKings. Uh, it was one of those slates where several teams scored, you know, seven to 10 runs or so. And when that happens, the stacks kind of get spread out a little bit more, but still fairly stack heavy in the perfect lineup. And the winning lineup went to Trevor Williams and Spencer Turnbull with a Colorado stack, a uh, Dodger one-off. Washington one-off, Mets one-off, uh, Padre one-off, kind of a just weird lineup that uh, would be really, really hard to recreate time and time again. I don't suggest making this build. I would much rather do that uh, good old, you know, 5 two, one that we see continually win here. But uh, congrats to the other guy. He won 100K with the lineup. Uh, so good on you, sir. Congrats. Now, let's check out uh, the FanDuel perfect lineup. And we got Jose Barrios. We got a two-man Houston stack. We got Jake Cronenworth. Two-man Washington stack. Got it done. Uh, and the winning lineup on FanDuel. We got Jose Barrios. So same pitcher here. Uh two-man Houston stack man this is another one that would be extremely hard to uh, recreate it's a two-man stack and then all one-offs you can do it uh this is more of a way to build a cash lineup in my opinion though and not one that I really love for these tournaments while this person did win and congrats to LS Hobbs I uh think they will have a hard time to recreate that uh but congrats to you you did win 30k and you won by a giant margin of uh 15 points so or just under 15 it was almost a full home run difference so congrats to you you took it down i uh, hope you do it again now let's uh get into it this slate Get over to uh, some projections here, and we will start on pitching as always. Highest owned pitcher, Joe Musgrove with the Padres against the Cubs. I really don't, you know, super love this spot. Uh, Padres so far have been pretty careful with the pitches. They're allowing the pitchers go. He uh, did go 88 last time out, but... I wouldn't expect him to go too much higher than that. That is almost fully stretched out, though. So, 
can't complain too much about it there but the thing here is the cubs are pretty good versus righties 166 iso 332 woba uh they do strike out at 22 percent and musgrove does has have a decent amount of uh, K rate, but my thing here is at 8,600, there's just not giant upside here. He needs to have one of these games like he did versus the Angels to see the upside at 8,600. So while I like Musgrove as a pitcher and don't mind him in this spot, I think I would probably be coming under owned at uh, the high ownership that we're seeing on him. Next, we got Tyler Glass now. He got 100 pitches last uh, last game. He's pretty much fully stretched out. It's a decent spot. Minnesota striking out almost 26% versus righties. They do hit righties hard, but that K rate is way up there. And Glass now is a strikeout pitcher. 32% K rate, combined K rate, 28%. I would way rather take my swings on Glass now at uh, this ownership than Musgrove at a little more ownership. Carlos Rodon next, 7,900, moderately owned, 15, 16%. Uh, Miami is awful versus lefties. Low ISO, low WOBA, strikes out in almost 23%. I, I like the spot for Rodon quite a bit, and they are uh, at home in Miami, which he hasn't been able, or in New York, which he hasn't been able to do so far this uh, season he has had two very good opponents in Houston and Arizona and still only given up three runs in you know 9.2 uh, innings so I don't think he's pitching that bad and I am fine to go back there uh, the stat cast data is a little bit scary but this offense is way worse than what we've seen him go against so I definitely am willing to take uh, some Rodon and his pitch counts are getting up there. I uh, I like the spot for Rodon. Zach Wheeler, 9,600. Don't mind it. Definitely have some. He's, you know, a stud pitcher and St. Louis hasn't been good versus righty. So going to take a couple swings there. Kyle Harrison, I am absolutely willing to take some swings on. He is a pretty good young pitcher does have his issues obviously but he has some real solid upside when it's working and it's in a good matchup versus the national so i do not mind taking some swings if for some reason cj abrams abrams is out of the lineup again it just dramatically helps uh harrison too as abrams is one of the few very good hitters in this washington uh on that washington team Merrill Kelly, 8,400 in Colorado. Colorado uh, is always a scary pit place to pitch. He pitched great versus them uh, to open the season. And one thing I want to bring up is, you know, like Zach Gallen, he's done okay in uh, Colorado. 28 fantasy points, 21, 20. Uh, he is serviceable. And at 8,400, I'm willing to take some shots against a Colorado Rockies team that's just not that great. While I don't love the spot, definitely intrigued. Next, Nathan Evaldi. I'm super intrigued by Evaldi here. Evaldi is a guy where his K rate, when he is on, is very, very well. Overall, his K rate's not that great. You know, 23% on... Uh, over the last 20 starts, but we see these just blow up games where he's has eight, seven, nine K's eight K's last game versus Tampa Bay, uh, 12 versus Oakland last season and 8.2 innings. And with that, I am absolutely willing to take some swings on Evaldi at low ownership here. The BVP data is good. He can really bring it when he's on. And this Oakland team is just terrible and striking out at, 20 almost 26 percent versus righties they got a low woba uh they do have a decent iso so if he can miss a couple bats so they're not hitting the bat very well uh that iso doesn't matter too much but i'm definitely intrigued by evaldi at lower ownership as i am with chris bassett versus seattle seattle's been one of those teams that we want to pick on so far uh to start the season. I don't think they're going to be like this the whole season, but they're not hitting the ball very well right now. So I'm willing to take some chances here. 
I do have a little bit of a worry, though. 81 plate attempts, they're hitting 296 off him. So this is a spot I don't mind taking some Seattle and some Bassett, just not in the same lineup, obviously, because uh, I do think there's upside here. Seattle striking out 24% versus righties. Uh, Bassett some has some K upside, 26.7%. Uh, combined K rate here. So I like both sides of this matchup, but I do side a little bit more on the Bassett uh, side and at low ownership, absolutely willing to take some uh, shots there. Now, I think there's a lot of pitchers that, that we could go to. There are obviously guys like George Kirby who have giant upside. They got crushed first uh, Cleveland, but had a great, you know, outing versus Boston. I uh, don't mind going there if you want to pay down. Don't mind going to Patrick Sandoval either at 7,100 versus uh, Ray's team. Sandoval is, you know, a decent pitcher. His stat cast data looks good. He's had decent success versus Tampa Bay. The combined K rate's 24%, which is nice at 7,100. So, uh, Sonny Gray, I do worry about. First game back off the IL. Got banged up in spring training. Uh He's going to be on a pitch count. Roughly 65 pitches is what they're saying. So uh, that's a no-go for me. And Cole Reagans, I got to bring up just because he's been so good this year. This is a very tough spot for him. Uh, faced Houston, you know, a decent amount. 81 plate attempts here and only a K rate of 18.5. So I don't love the spot for him versus a very good offense and one that's tough to strike out. Now. Let's get over to uh, FanDuel a little bit and check out pitching ownership over here. So we got Tyler Glass now highest owned. No surprise. Love the spot. Nathan Evaldi at 19%. So Evaldi is low owned on DraftKings, but higher owned on FanDuel. And I like the spot, like I said, for Evaldi. Definitely willing to go there. Uh, Wheeler. A higher owned one also don't mind if I have some Wheeler in this spot for sure. And just like fan, uh, DraftKings, I I think this is a very interesting spot for Rodon and definitely willing to uh, take some chance. At 7,700, he really does have the upside of, you know, some of these 9 and 10K guys. He hasn't shown it so far this season. Uh, there's K rate, you know, only 3 and 4Ks. In his two starts this uh, season, but his last non-injured season being 2022, his K rate was up into the 30% range. So I do think there is a chance, you know, we could see more of that uh, Rodon this season. He just hasn't shown it yet, but I'm definitely intrigued with him at uh, that price. Uh, Merrill Kelly is a little too expensive for me on DraftKings in Colorado. I like Bassett, like Musgrove, definitely willing to go to those guys. So now let's take a look at uh, good old stacks, good old stack attacks. Now, the big thing here, we got 11 games. So ownership is going to be spread out uh, fairly significantly here. Uh, not totally sure what's going on with uh, the stacks here. Let me try it again here get it to load uh so yeah 11 games a lot of different ways we can go uh stacking wise obviously this colorado game 11 game total is going to bring the most eyeballs to it but there's several games and several teams that have solid implied uh totals so if we bring this implied runs, our uh, Arizona has six, but Braves 5.2, Colorado five, uh, all interesting. Texas is five, LA Dodgers 4.7, all pretty interesting there. All right, now let's get into the stacks, our highest own stacks. My uh, computer's going a little slow today. Swore I clicked that.
There we go. All right, so Arizona coming in with the highest owned stacks. No surprise, it's it's a Colorado game. But hey, 52% ownership is not enough to sway me from going to Arizona. That's just simply not high enough. They should probably be higher than that, being that they have a full run total higher than implied total. Cal Quantrill, uh, meanwhile, not a very good pitcher. Do, 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 do. All right. So Cal Quantrill is not a very good pitcher, likely to not work deep in this game. His FIP is 5.65 over his last five, 4.85 over the last 20. That was like a lot of guys on base, and that's not something you want to do in Colorado. Next, we have Tampa Bay popping up versus Patrick Salt Sandoval. I don't love that option at high ownership, but it is a decent hitting environment, and there's probably going to be some home runs in that game, so I don't mind going there. Next, we got the highest projected uh, stacks. Also, I do have to say that uh, Josiah Gray was just scratched. It looks like John Adon will be starting for... Uh, Washington tonight, which is a little bit of a bummer for San Francisco since Gray does allow some home runs. Um, man, what is going on with my computer? It's taken so long. All right. The highest projected lineups are the Atlanta Braves. It's against Adrian Hauser. This Braves offense is ridiculous. And the only way you're probably going to get there is if you're paying down at pitching a little bit or you're taking guys like Orlando Arcia uh, to round out that stack and just get it a little bit cheaper or, you know, Kalinic, guys like that. But Hauser is kind of a tough pitcher to figure out. Sometimes he's good. Sometimes he's bad. I don't mind going there as this Braves offense can get to anybody. I am very intrigued by this Dodgers offense just going under owned in a very, very good spot. Louis Varland, five whip over his last 20, uh, or FIP. He's been good recently in his starts, but he does give up some real hard contact to lefties, and Dodgers have a lot of really good lefties. So definitely intrigued to pick up on the Dodgers a little bit here. Now, our highest value stack. is whenever it wants to uh update for me i'm sorry my computer is going at a snail's pace today for some reason um washington is popping up with that 2.8 x value so pretty high uh, value here for uh picking on kyle harrison and i mean washington is just extremely cheap the only way i'd really get to here today is if i want to pay it for pitcher with both guys uh i'm not likely to go here too much i'm fine with smaller stacks just not going to go big stacks here uh who else is popping up Oakland versus Evaldi. I do think that's a little interesting. The reason is Evaldi is a pitcher that can really get hit if he's off. But if he's on, you know, you're not touching him. And let's check out the ceiling stacks real quick. As always, this is probably going to be the Braves, the Rangers, you know, Houston, some of the better offenses in the league, uh, as well as Colorado matchups. And Philadelphia is popping up, which I think is an interesting one. Sonny Gray is not going to work super deep into the game. You're going to get into the bullpen. I can see some reasons you want to take uh, Philadelphia. Texas is up here versus Alex Wood. A uh, reminder that regardless of what uh, who the starting pitcher is for Oakland, their bullpen is absolutely terrible. So no matter how good bad the matchup is for the starter i'm always a little intrigued to pick on oakland like i am colorado just because colorado right now their bullpen has been terrible as well uh yankees are kind of interesting aj puck just has not been great yet he's really struggled with command 
We know he is a talented pitcher, and we've seen some real big upside, but he's struggled so far as a starter, and I don't mind trying to pick on uh, them a little bit at very low ownership and go with some Yankees bats there. Our leverage stack of the day. Highest leverage is... Do, 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 um, coming into Washington again, probably not one I'm going to play. Uh, at least not a full five man stack. Fine with the uh, smaller ones, but I'm not going to get there for that big time stack. Um, and the FIP that we want to pick on or possibly pick on, uh. <clears throat> Kyle Harrison, I do have to say he that 5.62 FIP is a little bit rough for him. Uh, we saw that last year that he wasn't always uh, the best pitcher. However, he is a big time prospect, so I do expect him to bounce back a little bit there. After Harrison, we are picking on Josiah Gray, who is no longer the uh starting pitcher that is a don uh one thing that i will say with this is that uh bullpen bullpen for washington isn't great so i don't mind uh some probably san francisco stacks as well um i think all in all it's a pretty interesting slate sorry that uh, my computer was a little slow today so the stacks took a little bit longer to load but all in all, uh, I think there's a ton of different ways to go today with 11 games on the slate. I don't think you need to uh, play the, the chalk. However, the chalk isn't chalky enough to totally uh, avoid. So I think uh, this slate is an interesting way. Get those lineups in order. Get your stacks. Figure out how you want to attack the slate. And good luck. We'll be back tomorrow. Adios.